to another stitch tutorial. This one is a little bit alien to me, but mm, we'll see how it goes. Now, when I say alien to me, the problem that I have with this particular stitch is that you have to hold your yarn a certain way. Now, the way I naturally hold mine is different to the norm. <laughs> so this is an ultimate challenge for me to do this tutorial because I hold my yarn like that. I pinch my work and it's those two fingers that move the yarn for me. That way I can control my tension um, and hold my work the way I feel comfortable. And um, there is nothing right or wrong with how you hold your work or how you hold your wool. That is completely down to you. But for this tutorial, for this stitch, unfortunately, there's only really one way you can do it. Eight, nine. Oh, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, for this stitch, you can make absolutely any number of stitches. It doesn't matter whether it's odd or even. Um, but when you've made your chain, add one to it, and then in the second from the hook, one two, single crochet, all the way across with your single crochet and then we start the challenge for me where I have no choice but to hold the yarn a certain way. So take those single crochets as your base. Of course you can do this. If you've already done a stitch below, you don't need to do the, the single crochet along the top. It's just doing, a, doing your base so that I have a base to give you for the tutorial. Now at the end of every row, like I am here, chain one and turn. Now this is where Lisa goes a little bit doolally. <laughs> What's new, right? So hold your work, hold your yarn and point up. Now you have your front of your yarn and your back of your yarn and that is important. You need to know the front and the back. Okay. So, in the very first stitch, go in and with your hook, instead of grabbing that from the back like we normally would, we are going to go the opposite and go round and we're going to grab that back thread rather than the front. So we're grabbing the back, we're bringing forward, oops, I shouldn't have let go of that, and we're bringing through like so. And that's when you let go of the loop. I'll do the next one properly, I promise. Remember, this is a challenge for me too. <laughs> so, with that loop out of the way, then grab your yarn and finish off the single crochet. So let's do that properly. We're going in to the next working stitch. So in and we're going around, grab the one at the back and pull through. With the working yarn, grab 
and pull through both on your hook and let go of your loop. So again, in, around the front of your held yarn and grab the back. Pull it through and let go of your loop. Keep it out of the way. Grab it with the other, other hand if you need to. Grab your working yarn and finish off that single crochet. Okay. Bear with me while I just grab some more. Okay. So, into the next stitch, around the front, grab the back. and bring through. Let go of that loop and you will see that I actually went through the loop by accident when I grabbed the yarn. So I'm going to take that back and do it again. In, around the front, grab the back. Bring it through. Grab your working yarn, pull it through. Now we have four loops. So let's keep going. Now, however tall or high you hold this finger, it's going to determine how big your loop is. So if I'm holding it right up there, and I go in, round, grab, and through, and then grab my working yarn and pull through to finish it, I'm going to end up with a much larger loop. If I go in to the next one, round, grab, and finish, I'm going to end up with a much smaller one. You are best to try and keep consistent because whenever there is a change of height for your loop, you really do know about it, as you can see here. Okay. So try to be consistent as much as you can. So round the front to the back, grab and pull through. Put that loop to the side, yarn over with your working wool and pull through. And there's your loop. Again, in, around the front, to the back, grab, oops, I missed it, hang on, around the front, grab the back, and pull through, get the loop out of the way, yarn over with your working yarn and pull through to finish off the single crochet. This is great for making hair on amigurumi or even fur or spikes. Think of a hedgehog just as an example. Also this is really good for rugs as well. Not so good for baby blankets because babies will get their little fingers caught up in the loops. Same with animals, so please bear that in mind. 
So over the top, round the back, bring it through, out of the way, yarn over, pull through. And we're on the end, so let's do another one to finish off this row. We're going into that last stitch. And we're going over the front to the back. Pull it through. Let's do that again. I find this very, very difficult on the ends because again, this holding of the yarn is very, very difficult for me. It's not my style, but heck, why not? So we now have our loops. We have the ones that I showed you that were different sizes and we have my consistence. Now, as I said at the beginning, on the end, we are chaining up one and turning. Now for this row, all you need to do is single crochet all the way along. Just make sure those loops stay out of the way. Push them down and away so you don't go through the loops as you're doing your single crochet. Only go through the V as you're supposed to. No loops involved. Of course, if you want to add height a little bit, just don't go overboard. For that row, you could easily do a half double crochet or a double crochet, but I would advise against any more than that because otherwise your loops are gonna be too spread apart. We're on the end, so we're chaining one. And we're turning. And we're going into the very first stitch and we're going around the front to the back pulling whoops pulling through letting go working yarn through to finish the single in around the front to the back, grab, pull through, just doing little loops on this row just to show you, in, around, the back, and through, oops, and through, yarn over, pull through. In, yarn over the front, grab the back and pull through. Loop out the way, yarn over, pull through to finish the single crochet. In. Hook over the front, grab the back, pull through, loop out of the way, yarn over with your working yarn and pull through both. Hook in, yarn around the front, grab the back, Pull through, loop away, 
yarn over and pull through. So I'll just do these last couple. Now let me see if I can show you something. So when we go in, when you go around the front and you grab the back, you need to make sure that you don't grab that side of the working yarn. You want to go behind it. So use that hook and turn it so that you don't grab this side but you go directly through and you might want to use your finger to actually make sure your loop stays a loop but out the way and you bring the actual yarn that you need through that stitch so let me show you that one more time because you can get caught up quite easily so in around grab from the back bring this side forward and out of the way if you need to now i'm doing it a little bit cack handedly as it were because i want you to see what's going on but you've got to do this with your hook so over grab from the back bring this side of the loop out of the way so that the back can be pulled through the stitch loop out of the way yarn over and pull through that may have just confused a lot of people a lot <laughs> but it might actually help some you see So, yarn, grab the back and pull through one. Loop goes to the back, you yarn over, you pull through. Now I've lost my consistency because I deliberately did a big one. Okay, but that's okay because I'm showing you. Round to the back, through and yarn over chain one and turn and let's just finish off with our row of single crochet so this is a two row repeat it makes a wonderful bath mat You could get a little crazy with a beanie and make a loopy beanie so it kind of looks like hair something a little bit novelty and the last one Now, let's put a, a stitch marker on there so it doesn't pull out. Get that over the other side. Hide my tail. So you can see I did much smaller loops here at the top. But they will gradually all lay flat as you work they just go down but can you see the difference between the different sizes and why it's important to stay consistent as best you can and yes it takes practice it does I can't deny that it takes practice but it's a lot better to do it than 
to say it. So go slowly, bit by bit by bit, and pick up the pace as you get there. It's like any, st any brand new stitch. Do it a few times, you'll get there. But there is the loop stitch made with my custom hook link down below <laughs> and of course my stitch markers in the community post <laughs> anyway i hope it's helped maybe a little bit possibly if it has please give a thumbs up maybe you'd be interested in a regular tutorial they are each tuesday so far and if that's something that you would like please subscribe down below and maybe i'll see you next time Take care. Bye-bye.